But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the Bible, now this is something we cannot afford to misunderstand. In fact, some of the most awful words Jesus Christ ever uttered was in his Sermon on the Mount when people would come up to him on Judgment Day and people would say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? I mean, there's no doubt in our mind that these are Christians. I mean, they are driving out demons, performing miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus. And yet, the most awful words Jesus Christ would say to them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Wow. Can you imagine all your life you misunderstood what it means to be a Christian? There are things in life we cannot afford to misunderstand. In fact, in the last days, and we are in the last days, the Lord Jesus Christ said the main battle, he said, false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. So, in these last days, the battle is deception. And that's why there's a need for us to understand what the Word of God says. Now, there are some people today who say that, you know, all we need is the Bible. You don't need the Holy Spirit, you know, yung mga signs and we don't need all those things. We just need the Bible. That's all we need. That's one group. There's the other group who says, you know what we need is the Holy Spirit. We don't need, you know, the Bible. That's, that's old revelation. We need a fresh revelation from God. These two groups. But friends, what I believe we really need today is a combination of both. What we need today are spirit-filled Christians and Christians who are founded in the scriptures. Christians who are filled, I'm sorry, it went too fast there. Christians who are filled with the Spirit and founded in the Scriptures. That's the kind of balance that we need. And hopefully we can strike that balance as we go through this seminar, The Apollos Project. And so again, welcome everyone to The Apollos Project, equipping the saints in expounding the Scriptures. Now, some of you might be wondering still, what's the name Apollos all about? Well, let me say this very clearly. We have nothing to do with Apollo Kibuloy, all right? We're not in any way connected to that group. The name Apollos is taken from the book of Acts, Acts 18, 24 to 26. I'd like for all of us to read this together. All of us, please, including those uh, sub balcony. Everybody, ready, read. <laughs> When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Okay, let's take note of some of the things Dr. Luke mentioned here. First of all, is this husband and wife tandem, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. Now, of course, Priscilla is the wife, but she's mentioned first because the husband is under the saya. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a misinterpretation, all right? She is more well-known in the community. They attach, you know, whoever is more well-known. So Priscilla is more known in the community. And then her husband, of course, is Aquila. These are two of the more popular disciples of the Apostle Paul. They reside in Rome. They are also tent makers. But one day, Emperor Claudius kicked out all the Jews from Rome. So they had to relocate. And they relocated in Ephesus where the Apostle Paul was planting a church. Three years he spent in Ephesus. And so they would help the Apostle Paul. They would, they would visit a synagogue and then they would listen. And they would argue from scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Now one Sabbath morning, they heard a visiting Jewish teacher by the name of Apollos. And you know, they listened to this guy, the way he thought. And then he, they said, Ang galing! Magaling to! But the more they listened, they said, Wait a minute! Something is not right in his presentation. Something is lacking. And that's why they invited him to their home to train him more. Kaya naging project nila si Apollos. Alright. But then, look at the way Dr. Luke describes Apollos. Unang-una, he's a native of Alexandria. 
Now we know that Alexandria is like a university belt at that time. It, con it, it houses uh, some of the biggest libraries in the world in Alexandria in, in northern Egypt. And so that's where Ephesus here, uh, is. And then it says there, all right, Alexandria, and then that's Ephesus. And then it says that he was a learned man. He was a man who was trained in Greek rhetoric. Magaling siya magsalita. And then coupled with that, he had a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. Now, can you imagine that combination? He, he's, a, he's good in Greek rhetoric, and then he's uh, in-depth in his knowledge of the scriptures. And that's why the way he spoke, he spoke with great fervor. Now, the word fervor in the original means to boil, you know? That means he was passionate. That means he was on fire. Walang natutulog kapag si Apollos ang preacher. In fact, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, pinag-aagawan siya na preacher sa Corinth. People would call the secretary on Saturday, sino ba preacher bukas? Pag hindi si Apollos, hindi magsisimba. You know? Hanggang ngayon, napasa ngayon yan sa atin. Pero... That's, that's the way Apollos would preach. He was on fire as a preacher. And then, tingnan nyo naman, he would speak boldly in the synagogue. Wow! But then, the apostle, uh, the Dr. Luke mentioned something negative in a very, uh, you know, non-offensive way, though he knew only the baptism of John. Now, if he knew only the baptism of John, of course, that's the, that's the baptism to prepare them for the coming of the Lord. John did not witness the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not teach about the crucifixion. He did not witness the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not uh, witness the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So can you imagine preaching the gospel without the crucifixion? Declaring Jesus the Messiah, of course, but without the crucifixion, without the resurrection, without Pentecost. So a big chunk of the message is missing. And that's why Priscilla and Aquila, it says there, they invited him to their home and to explain to him the way of God more adequately. Friends, we took note of two words here in the NIV, the words accurately and adequately. I believe that today, there's a great need to have Christians to study accurately and preach adequately the Word of God. And this is what the Apollos Project is all about. It's equipping the saints in expounding the Scriptures. And brothers and sisters, in light of the proliferating false doctrines, one, of the, one area of utmost importance is training Christians in their ability to interpret the word and accurately, uh, interpret the word accurately and preach it adequately. So again, welcome everyone to the Apollos Project. We're here to augment your accuracy and adequacy. Now, we're not assuming that you're zero in terms of, of your accuracy because we believe you already reached some level of accuracy. But somehow, after these two days, we're hoping the Spirit would just help us augment these areas of accuracy and adequacy. In the area of accuracy, you know, a lot of times we use the Bible in a way that doesn't, you know, that takes the verse out of its context. There was this pastor who was visiting a member one time, and uh, it's one of the more affluent members of his church. And so, there was a gate, and then he walked past the gate. There was a garden. He walked past the garden, and then he started knocking at the door. Now, he could hear some people inside. He could hear some noise inside the house, but nobody opened the door. And so, he was kind of frustrated. The pastor wrote a, a verse of scripture, on a piece of paper and then he wrote this verse behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come into him and eat with him and he with me you know that's a favorite verse of pastors for visitation <laughs> especially because it says there I will eat with him you know <laughs> na, yung visitation natatayamin ng hapuna niyan tsaka tanghalian eh you know medyo makabawas ng konti sa budget and so he went away frustrated but then the following day he went to church and then, just before he opened the door of his office, this same paper, piece of paper, was stuck on his office door. At the back of the paper, the member also wrote a verse of scripture. And the member wrote this verse. It says, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was taken, and so I hid. <laughs> may, may reason naman pala, kaya hindi nabuksan. But you know what, friends? What this is telling us? What this tells us is this. 
An out of context pastor will always produce an out of context member. <laughs> because that's how they learn the Bible from their pastors, from their Bible study leaders, from their Sunday school teachers. And that's why we need to grow in accuracy. But then not only accuracy, we also need to grow in adequacy and how to preach the Bible adequately. I have this statement here. I'd like for all of us to read. Let's all read this together. Ready? Read. That's the mortal sin in preaching, is when you bore people with the Word of God. You know what it communicates is that the Bible is a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of effort. And that's the mortal sin in preaching. Now, I know that there are some pastors, do you know, they have the gift of healing. You know, the gift of healing, kahit na meron kang insomnia, once he preaches, napapatulog ka niya. You know, merong, merong gift of healing. And so, even with insomnia, wow. The moment he preaches, you can go to sleep. But I love this statement by Haddon Robinson, 19 years professor of homiletics at Dallas Theological Seminary. He said, there are three types of preachers, those to whom you cannot listen, those to whom you can listen, and those to whom you must listen. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't have to ask you which type of preacher or teacher you'd like to become part of. We all want to become part of the those to whom people must listen. But to be the best teachers and preachers that we can be requires time, money, and effort. And I really praise God that you gave us the time to come here. In fact, there's a couple here. They're celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Come on, let's, let's give them a hand. That's the couple from uh, Cagayan de Oro. Today is their wedding anniversary. You gave us the time. You made the effort to come here. And then, of course, the money. Bayad na ba kayo? Baka naman hindi pa kayo nagbayad, ha? And so, again, we really thank God for this uh, privilege that we can come together. So, friends, welcome to the Paulus Project. We're equipping the saints in expounding the scriptures. Here, we're going to learn how to develop the sermon or Bible study material, how to deliver it adequately. So, one deals with accuracy, the other deals with adequacy. Level one is sermeneutics, level two tomorrow is exegesis, and then level three, homiletics, Probably next year, we do not know, but we're going to pray about that. So, levels 1 and 2, definitely this weekend. So, look into your uh, manuals now. And we're looking at the syllabus, page 7, of your manuals, page 7. Now, this manual that you're holding is an offshoot of my doctoral dissertation. So, in 2001, I wrote a 364-page doctoral project, and the title of the project is Pursuing Excellence in Preaching, a Module on the Development and Delivery of Expositor Sermons for Filipino Preachers. So, I had the uh, Filipino mindset, and my target are those pastors who haven't gone through formal theological training, you know? They've not been to Bible school, they've not been to uh, seminary, a seminar, seminar lang sila. The seminary is, they're not able to produce enough leaders to pastor to so many churches and therefore, it's the seminary now who goes to where the pastors are. And so that's why we're conducting this seminar. And this workbook that you have is a conglomeration of 97 books, 23 articles, and two teaching videos. Alright? I tried to cite the uh, sources there in your manual. Okay? Now, just to give you an overview if you go through a seminary training, the first level of training will involve studying biblical introductions. You'll have New Testament introduction, you'll have Old Testament introduction, you'll also have biblical languages. You'll start with Greek 1 up to Greek 4, you'll have Hebrew 1 up to Greek, uh, Hebrew 4. And then, first level of training always includes hermeneutics, the science and art of interpreting the Bible, the principles in studying the Bible. Now, the second level of training, you'll be putting these three together, and then you'll be trained in biblical exegesis. That means you apply the principles in a particular biblical passage and come up with the understanding. The third level of training, you'll be exposed to a myriad of other subjects, systematic and biblical theology, you'll have church history, you'll have philosophy of religion and apologetics, homiletics, and other subjects depending on your specialization. Now, the desire of every seminary or Bible school is to produce Bible expositors. That's the desire of every seminary or Bible school. 
to produce Bible expositors. So in this seminar of the Apollos Project, if you go through the, all three levels, friends, we are focusing on all these four subjects, main subjects, one semester in seminary, one semester in seminary, one semester, and then that's the uh, preaching clinic, another semester in seminary. Now we're going to tackle the first two semesters here in just two days. In just 14 hours. Kaya kapatid, maidlip ka ng konti, you missed one semester already. <laughs> Sayang. Sayang. Kaya, we need to be alert. Sayang ang binayad natin. One semester agad ang nawala. Now, I know that the Bible is like a giant jigsaw puzzle for many people. You know, there's so many events, there's so many people, there's so many uh, places. And sometimes we cannot connect the people, the places, and the events. Now, if I ask this group this morning, how many of us here, you know, how many of you enjoy doing jigsaw puzzle? How many of you enjoy doing jigsaw puzzle? Know, just raise your hand. Don't be embarrassed. Raise it high. Look at all these people who enjoy jigsaw puzzle. All right. Praise God. Now, according to an article from USA Today, one of the early warning signs of mental illness is enjoying jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want we don't want any untoward incident in this seminar so just watch out for those people who raise their hands okay titignan tingnan nyo lang yan paminsan minsan alright no I'm just joking of course there's no such article but friends what's my task what's my task here for two days Every manufacturer of jigsaw puzzle will provide you with one important ingredient in the jigsaw puzzle. And what's that? The big picture. Without the big picture, you cannot form the puzzle. Friends, my task here for two days is to provide you with a big picture. I'm not here to solve your puzzle. If you came here because you want to find out where Cain got his wife, I don't know also. <laughs> You know, I'm not here to solve your puzzle. I'm here to give you the big picture, give you the principle so that when you go home, you can find the answer for yourself. Amen? Amen. So that's our deal. All right. So, course objectives, there are three letter uh, Ds there that we left blank. Write down the first letter D. One is we want to define the key terms involved in the hermeneutical process. Now, I know that some of you here already graduated from... Bible school, maybe some even from seminary. And so, you know, we're trying to address your people who have not gone through formal uh, theological training. Number two, we want to discover why there are different interpretations and the ground rules for accurate interpretation. But then number three, and friends, here's the most important, we want to dedicate ourselves. If somehow after these two days, you dedicate yourself to excellence in studying God's Word. You know, when you prepare for a sermon, you don't just prepare it on Saturday night, you know, and then preach the following day. You added more days because of this seminar in preparing for a Sunday school lesson or Bible study. You really take seriously the Word of God. Friends, let me be honest with you. I did not leave my family in Toronto for one month. To define, to help you define and discover that that's not my goal. You can find the definitions, you can find, you know, all these other things. But friends, I was willing to let my wife, Judy, of 26 years, my daughter Rejoice, who's now 23, and my son Josiah is 21, for number three. I'm praying that the Lord will just use this seminar somehow to encourage you to really seriously study the Word of God and be careful when we teach it to people. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's number three. All right.